Okay, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. New video every Friday on HTML5 and 3D stuff, mainly using 3JS. Uh, so far, we've done a lot of stuff. Definitely recommend watching previous videos because we're going to build off the code we've already created. But as far as shapes, we've done cubes and we've done planes. But 3JS also allows for other basic shapes such as uh, spheres, cylinders, and cones which are basically cylinders. Uh, and so I'm just going to show you today how easy it is once you know the basics of 3JS how straightforward it is to create these other shapes. So let's go ahead and look at our code. So it took a code from last week, copied it into a new file called sphere.html. Obviously it's still a cube here. Let's go ahead and have a look at this code called sphere. So right here we create our cube, but we're going to create a sphere. Now again, this name right here, cube, is the name of the object. You can call it whatever you want, but we'll call it sphere just to prevent uh, confusion. Uh, let's also, we add it to the scene. Let's move that up here. Ah, okay. Let's add that up here. Scene dot add sphere. Just so it's by where we create it. You can either decide you, you decide where you want to add it. Just I me, mean, I like to keep things next to each other. Okay. So we're gonna call the object sphere. That doesn't make it a sphere, that's just what it's called. But in here we have uh, that we're creating a new mesh. What type of mesh is it? It's from our uh 3JS we're gonna use cube geometry? No, we're going to change this to say sphere. Okay, so we have our sphere and that's pretty much it other than giving it different parameters in here. Now with a cube you want to give it height, width, and depth. That's what we have here. Well, sphere doesn't work like that. A sphere does take three values I think, but let's double check the documentation. 3JS is very well documented at their website. Sphere uh, it can take all six of these, but really we're just going to pass it three. A radius, uh, width of the segments, and, uh, and height segments. The, the number of width segments and the number of height segments. Uh, once again, if you hover over these, it tells you this one's a float, this one's an integer, and this one's an integer. So these are whole numbers. This one can be a whole number or a decimal. It tells you the defaults. If you were to leave these blanks, default for a sphere radius is 50. Uh, the number of horizontal segments, the minimum is three, the default is eight. I suppose it doesn't look like there's really, it doesn't list a maximum, but obviously the higher those are, those numbers are, the smoother your sphere is going to be. The, the, the width and height segments, the higher they are, the smoother they're going to be, but also more system resources it's going to take up. Okay, we're not even going to look at these other options because I actually haven't looked at them myself. Um, but let's go in here. Let's go ahead and leave this def def what we have from be before with the cube, and we'll change that here in a little bit just to play around with them. But go back to here, go back to here, and refresh. And uh, something's wrong. Let's see. Maybe these numbers don't want to be that high. Or I type something wrong somewhere. Scene add looks good. F12. I'm using Firefox. I'm going to hit F12 because I have Firebug installed. Refresh the page. Um, oh, okay. That's the problem right there. See, it's nice having these debug consoles. Uh, both Firefox, Chrome, and most browsers have some sort of basic uh, console in it to for debugging of JavaScript. Uh, I like Firebug. It is great. And right there, what the problem is, the whole code's locking up because up in our animate function here, which is rotating stuff, is trying to rotate cube, which no longer exists. So we're going to come in here and change this to say sphere. Even though you're not going to see that animation because it's rotating and it's a perfect cube with symmetrical color all the way around. Um, but at a later date when we add different textures to it, you'll be able to see it. So F5, there is our cube, or our sphere spinning around. Actually, you can see it spinning because of the low resolution we have set at 10 and 10. 
if we were to one lower the size of that because it was rather large to 100 units and we were to up the resolution of the height and width segments now you can't really tell that it's rotating you can see a little bit of quivering in the pixels here on the edge but so smooth and symmetrical in color you can't see it rotating even though it is um, let's again lower these segments uh, minimum they said was three let's do that let's go three and three and there we go it really doesn't look like a sphere anymore um, but that's the minimum uh, let's go ahead and set it to th oh, 31. I meant to say 30, but I hit the wrong number, but 31 is fine. So there you go. It's a little smooth. So definitely higher numbers are going to be more of a system resources. This is a pretty smooth sphere right here. Obviously not as smooth as having the numbers up at 100, but you're looking at a third uh, the number of polygons. Actually, uh, maybe even less because it's a third of height and width. I guess that would be a third. I don't know. It's definitely a lot less than 100 of both. Uh, and you can see it rotating around this way because we have it rotating on the Y axis. Um, so just remember the three main things you want on this are uh, this is the radius, so this is how big the sphere is going to be. Uh, and then this is how these two are how smooth by number of, there's other ways to smooth stuff out, but smooth by the number of polygons, the segments, uh, height and width. Okay, now that we have that done, We've looked at creating a sphere. Let's vim into another file we have called cylinder.html and let's have a look at that. Again, it's the code we started with, which was our code from last week, which is a cube. Let's come in here and change things. We'll call this, um, well, we want to make it a cylinder. So instead of calling it a cube, we'll call it cylinder, um, which is kind of, I like to abbreviate stuff. So we'll just say, uh, CYL. Actually, we can even call it cone because at the end we're going to turn it into a cone of sorts. But so we changed it up there. This will be able to definitely see rotate uh, uh, when we're rotating it, depending on which way we're rotating it. But here we also want to call this the same thing. And when we add it to the scene, which is down here, CYL, let's move that up here. Okay. So we're creating an object called sill, and uh, it is, we're calling from our 3JS, we're going to create a new mesh, uh, new geometry, what type of geometry? Well, we don't want a cube, we want a cylinder. So we will just come in here, remember this is case sensitive, so capital C here, cylinder, geometry. Okay, so... This takes uh, very different, well, I don't want to say very different, but different, these three numbers aren't going to cut it. Uh, it might throw in some default stuff, but let's go here to the documentation on their website, um, and we're going to go to cylinder geometry. So we have our top radius, bottom radius, height, segment, uh, radius segments, height segments, and whether it's open-ended or not. So let's, and of course it has some information in here on default values. Um, so top and bottom, let's keep those the same at first. So we'll make them both 100 to start out. Height, uh, we'll leave that at 100 for right now. Okay, uh, so radius segments and height segments. Let's go 50 and 50 on those. And open-ended, that would be, if we hover over this, it should say balloonay. That's how I say that. Um, balloonay. Yeah. Anyway, true or false. And we will say um, false at first. So now we will click here and refresh. There is our cylinder. Okay. So actually, let's change this to... Wait. I spelt false wrong, didn't I? Well, I'm drawing a blank there. Yeah, I'm spelling it right. Open-ended false should mean that it's not open-ended, but it is displaying open-ended. Oh, maybe I don't, do I not want? Sorry about this, I hate when I mess up in tutorials. There we go. I was writing it as a string, it doesn't want it as a string. That was the problem. Okay, 
and I'll explain what was going on there momentarily. So here's our cylinder. It's rotating this way, so you can't really see it rotating because it's rotating on the smooth surface like a wheel would. Let's rotate it on the x-axis. So we'll come up here to our animation function and change it to rotate instead of the y. It will rotate on the x, and now we get it rotating this way. There we go. You can see it a little bit better now. Now, let's uh, play around with this. It's kind of short and pudgy right now. Let's make the height. So we got the top and bottom radius. Let's change the height to 200. Save that. Refresh. Now it's a little taller. Nice. Okay. Um, let's lower these numbers down to 10 and 10. Okay, so you can see it's a little blockier now. There aren't as many segments. Um, and so let's turn it up a little bit. Let's find a nice medium area. We had it at 50 before. Let's set it to 20 and 20. So there we go. It's still kind of blocky. Once again, you got to have your, your, your target audience. What is this going to be running on? Is this going to be running on a phone or uh, a full-speed computer? Or is there, are they going to have hardware acceleration? You know, for me, this is good enough. <laughs> it looks decent and it uses a lot less segments so a lot less polygons um, and let's go here and we will change this this is top bottom so we're changing the bottom radius so you can change the bottom radius or was that the top radius it seemed to be the top no it was about the bottom so not that you can tell because it's rotating head end over end so really if you want to create a, a cone you just set either the top or bottom to zero, depending on whether you want the top or bottom to come to a point. So there we go. We got it rotating. Uh, we got our cylinder that's kind of like a cone. Um, but let's go back and look at this uh, open-ended. Let's change this to true. There we go. Now we do that, and you'll notice, oh, it's like white at the end. The reason for that, okay, we... This is basically, there's no end cap, so you can see inside the cylinder, inside the cone, inside the cylinder, whatever you want to call it at this point. But our materials are only one-sided, so basically we're seeing through the inside of the cone. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. Most 3D uh, renderers, by default, will keep... Will make materials that are only one-sided to save on on rendering you don't have to worry about rendering stuff that's out of view if the object is enclosed so if an example like this if you wanted the end caps to be open you probably would want to make a double-sided material I didn't show you it but I'm pretty sure the same is true with the plane that we created in the first tutorial if we were to rotate that plane to where you could see the other side it would be invisible on the other side because we can see through it future tutorial we will get into uh, materials uh, a little more and make them double-sided but for now let's set this back to false so that we have end caps it isn't open-ended false to open-ended and there we go we have our cylinder slash cone again all uh, both these will be uploaded to my site there'll be a link in the description to all the scripts in this series um, or at least most where you can look at the the actual functioning uh, script in your browser. You can also look at the code, download it, modify it, play with it. That's how you learn. Play with a lot of the values, see what happens, see what you come up with. That's how you learn. So I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And yes, I actually spell my name with a K, K-R-I-S. Uh, so if you do uh, message me, uh, preferably in the IRC channel at our site on freenode.net. Um, I'm in there under Metal X 1000, but my name is Chris with a K, K R I S, because people still write it C H R I S, even though my website's Films by Chris, and I'm assuming they just don't realize that that's actually how I spell my name. Anyway, um, part of a series, be sure to check out the annotation for the full playlist. New video every week if you get to a point in the playlist where there is a private video that means that video has not been posted yet don't message me asking me how you gain access to it you gain access to it by waiting another week until it is published a uh, new video every friday if you like this topic of 3d stuff in your web browser uh that it, that it makes it easy to get 3d stuff from uh, desktop to other to mobile devices and 
then be sure to like this video. We will get into more advanced stuff further down the line, um, like first-person shooter style stuff where you can look around and hop. We'll get into physics a little bit where you can knock stuff over and throw stuff. Um, way down the line, obviously, but we're getting there. We'll get into importing models uh, that you've exported from something like Blender or full scenes from Blender. 3JS allows all of this and makes it very easy to do. For now, uh, keep watching the playlist, and uh, I hope that you have a great day.